trying to build a team fight composition of some sort, a very traditional front to back style. And now we see how Bounty is going to respond, right? They get rid of the Novara, they also get rid of that Lilia. They want to make sure that at least for Team Hawk, they don't have enough peel. This could indicate two things. Either one, it is a more dive style of composition as we see the lock in. It's going to be Ruby instead. So somebody to smother, somebody to slow down their opponents, but still has the capability of making that big play. Hmm. And this one is more straightforward. You don't have to really guess where this Ruby is going to go. Like I said, the first three picks, Bounty, they're not kind of put, they're, they're not playing with any smokes and mirrors. It's all out in the open for you to see. Ruby is going to roam for sure. Now, the jungler is going to be safe for last. So a lot of prioritization on Yuna's hero in particular. Yeah, and man, this could be a pretty tough one, right? Again, a big pinch on towards that mid lane. There's not a lot of op options left to really play. There's you the Thermis or Nana. Or the Valentina, that could be an option. I mean, I think Valentina is going to be the safest option. They lock in the Valentina here. So far, so good here at MPL MY in terms of its overall stats. But they're also going to go for the Cho this wow. time around. Okay, so still have a bit of that pickoff potential. Perhaps that could indicate why the Minotaur and the Kaja were banned out, right? You hmm. do make this show a lot, you give him a lot more agency to work with. But of course, the final pick for Bounty in the jungle is going to be that Martis, a direct answer to the Shredrit. Yeah, a lot of disruptive CC coming from the side of Bounty Esports. They're generally going to be playing around a combination of somebody setting it up for Vexana to go for a big, combin a big combo and just peeling for carry. If you jump over to the side of Team Hawks, this one's a little bit more interesting. They have a lot more dynamic ways of going for these skirmishes, but traditionally still want to play front to back. Tradition, tradition is kind of the word to describe this strategy. It's very, very common. Perhaps the show is the slight outlier. I'm pretty sure this is not a Cho jungle, by the way. But overall, I think for Team Hawk, you have a very stable draft that has multiple layers that you can fall back to if things don't work out. Whereas for Bounty, it feels like if that early game doesn't work out, you're resorting to the might to the macro play where her boss has to control the side lane. I mean, it's going to be a tough fight here. Both EXP laners not going to let each other walk out of that lane without some kind of punishment. But let's see. It's going to be that first turtle that makes all the difference for either or as we jump here into the Land of Dawn. Game one between Team Hawk and Bounty Esports. And both teams have a lot to prove. I'm looking at this XP lane matchup. We all know export into Paquito. Paquito. He might not be able to damage you too much, but he sure can constantly leave that lane. I mean, x is put into the Wait, jungle this time Wait, it is the jungle, around. okay. Yeah, they, they are Wait. committing him into the jungle. I think it's about disrupting the initial turtle fight, right? You don't, the one thing a jungler absolutely hates, a lot of CC, especially when you're getting closer to that retribution timing, and when you get locked down, and locked down, and then locked down again, there's nothing you can do. It's not even about a retry battle. It's who has more CC. Well, Yen Lord's Flicker is going to be forced out. Try to go for an intel gathering journey, but ends up getting spotted by three members of Team Hawk. And that means this has been, it's been quite a long time since we see Frederick into Paquito. Clearly, this is a very Iris pick. Not many players go for this choice anymore. It's a good sandbag, but again, you can't. It, it's harder. It gets harder to keep up with the Paquito as the game progresses. Yeah, I mean, it really depends. If he dies at least one time, oh boy, Iris is in so much trouble. But Havas even trading against somebody like Iris with so much sustain is almost kind of pointless, right? But he needs to get out of the lane regardless. Obviously, Havas has the upper hand. He's gonna let that wave shove in first. And on the top side, Yuna unfortunately won't be able to get any avenues. No steals on the jungle camp. Eventually, we have to converse on the bottom side. That's where the turtle will spawn. Yep, first couple of items are already coming in hard, and it looks like Havas not even going to go for Tier 2 boots. Doesn't need it. He wants the Fury Hammer as soon as possible to make sure that these trades are going to stick onto Iris. Allows him to kind of leave the lane as well. If I want to manage the wave, I want to cut it between the Taurus, I can do it as well. They say it's going to drop low Havas. Unfortunately, he can't land the KO punch, but it's fine. With Dominus beside him, and both of them at level 4, is about for the turtle contest. Yeah, Lexia, he has to hit level 4, by the way, and Dominus has. It's going to be a bit of an awkward timing. Team Hawk going to look to delay this Lord for as long as they possibly can. And that's also because the wave got shelved up so fast that Iris had no choice but to take the minion for himself before Lexia even arrived. Now he has hit 4. The good news for Team Hawk is that they forced this early recall out from Panda, right? So at least Saken is sort of winning the lane now, but whether he can crash this wave early, I don't think is possible. Well, it's going to be tough. Yuna. 
We're gonna start pulling the Lord here. A level ahead of Iris. I think they might just have to give this up, right? There's just no there's just no reason for them to actually keep on going. Havas is already going to be there to make sure they have some coverage. Perfect. Exactly what we wanted to see here from Bounty Esports. Might have to go back to plan B. Let this Xbox continue to farm up. Needs that first core item before he starts making some impact. But you also need someone to really smother this Martis. You can't let him run for you and it become Yan Lord with the flick of pull instantly takes out Saken without a beat. Good play coming in from Yan Lord, really punishing Saken, giving him no window of opportunity to flicker out of that in tandem with Dominus. And this is going to be great for Panda at the very least, right? He's going to continue to scale up just a little bit faster and Saken, unfortunately, just has to wait it out. And that's coming off of Saken having that lane priority for the first three minutes of the game, and now the entire pendulum have shifted. Team Ha wanted to look for something in the middle lane, is going to pull Dominus back, but you have a boss with them, and Noir is going to be the second victim, decimated by Yuna, and this top tier one gone before the four minute mark. Mm -hmm. Yep, I don't know whether that hot fix was enough to make sure that Ruby is out of this meta, but it's uh, I guess it's quality of life for everybody dealing with her. <laughs> Two seconds yeah. to one second slow, like, oh, okay, I guess that's her problem. <laughs> it's less annoying, but they didn't say it's not effective. Yeah, it, she's so good at what she does. With so many ways to force Noir to actually use the Shunpo to get out of tight spots, this puts Noir in a very tough spot, right? He's got to be very proactive. He's got to be very patient with the way that he actually approaches the situation before he makes a play. I think you can say the same for the side lane, especially for Iris. I know it's too early to say it's only four and a half minutes in, but judging by how things have transpired, her voice just getting that Hunter's strike means that Iris will, at this point onwards, won't be able to keep up with this Paquito. Paquito is always going to be the first to leave the lane, the first to join fights, and Iris, he's going to either have to soak up the wave or give it away to help his team. Well, it's a little tough to say. They're not going to dive this, are they? I mean, Yellow's going to try. They definitely can dive this. It's not even close. Uh, I mean, at the very least, they made a good read thinking that, hey, there's a good chance Iris is going to try and walk out of this lane, get some information before we do anything. Let's try and go for this big punish, and we're going to get a lane swap done right off of this. They understand this this hurdle means absolutely nothing to them. The gold being invested into Panda as an insurance policy to close out the game is far more a priority. The deposit is paying off. They are now getting that dividend from the side of Panda. And in fact, this entire snowball is starting to get accelerated just a little bit. Her voice now has free reign of both the top and bottom lane. Mm -hmm. I mean, just look at the jump. Oh, the good kick. Can they get rid of Yanlor? This Ruby will be able to flick the safety alongside with the Qs of Conceal. Janus comes in with the last sanity, but the damage is not enough. Panda also joins the fight. Both teams disengage. All right, all right. At least they got the flicker out of Yanlor. He's not going to be able to make some significant plays for the next 105 seconds. But same can be said about Noir. At the very least, nobody takes any significant casualties. Just a bunch of battle spells being thrown into the wind. Mm -hmm. Oh. Well, Team Ha looking to kind of slow things down, down a little bit, and this is where we kind of fall back to the fundamentals, right? Keep that tier 1 mid alive, and you sort of keep that map control within your grabs. If you're Yuna, you're going to start power farming. Again, the turtle now becomes a secondary objective for Bounty Esports. Team Ha can have it, but we're getting something done elsewhere. Yep, a majority of this gold lead is coming from Yuna himself, right? He's a thousand gold ahead of Janus as of right now. Eventually, it's not going to matter. Oh. oh, no. Sake with his flying tackle, gets the stun, okay. With the world to push her boss back, but He's Yuna perfect. shows up. There's a decimation. Can he get close enough? Yuna decimates the wrong target and ends up going down. Her boss also to follow. Lacia saving his teammate and finds a double. Beautiful play. Good use. Good use there with both Noir and as well as Lexia taking shots from Havasa to protect Saken for as long as possibly can. In the very least, they are able to trade two for one in that type of situation, which is not too bad, but let's see whether this is going to start paying dividend in the later stages as we start moving into mid-game. Saken still goes down, but the goal gets, goes into Lacia. Now middle side, Panda can't really take this fight. We see that early immortality from Janus. This should be a first item immo for the, uh, for the x -Bar. We kind of discussed about it in the earlier series, and this is kind of what Team Hawk has settled on with. Yep, and they have to take their time here. Now, both sides actually want this Lord. Sorry, they want this turtle at this point of time. I'm trying to see whether the side, there's any pressure in the side lanes that can be built up here, but now they engage. Find the kick. Noir gets pulled back as well. Yuna is going to be in this fight. Watch out for the decimation. He is concealed. Decimate onto the Fredrin. That's number one. Yuna looking for number two. Fights three in a row with the help of a boss. 
Bounty Esports have won this team fight, and Team Hawk just have to take the loss. Yep, three for one trade, and unideal for the side of Team Hawk as Bounty now will take the turtle for free. A good play coming in from the side of Bounty Esports, and I, this is what you meant by trying to go in fast. A very decisive decision from the side of Bounty, and everybody was on board with the plan. And you also can see kind of the synergy between Yuna and Havos coming together, right? Havos, he knows he has the damage. All he needs to do is to bring you down low for Yuna to get those out resets. And Yuna, unfortunately, does go down, but at the end of the day, Bounty East will still get a net gain. It's still worth it, though. It's still so very worth it, right? Even if he does have a, a shutdown gold. Oh. Yep. Oh, I think they suspect it. Yep, yep. they're suspecting it. That game is going to immediately recall. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Good, good decision coming in for the side of Team Hawk. I think they've kind of identified for the most part of it that, hey, it looks like Bounty really want to just make sure that Sakin never gets the scale in this game. Yeah, and we don't see her voice in the side lane. He should be in the top lane. At least theoretically, he should be there, but he's not. But that means Bounty takes control of the entire bottom wave. Uh, they could look to intercept this, but it's still a man disadvantage here, unless they're bringing all five of their members to do so. I don't know how important this tier 2 is towards Bounty Esports, but... Oh. Jungle ain't really safe either. Noir with the Conceal. They will be able to get on top of Panda, and that's a target to look for. Yellow with the Flicker to protect Panda to get the kick, but in the wrong direction. It is fine though. Janice with the last of Sandy will get rid of Panda. Lacia pulls them back with the stolen I'm offended. It is a 2 for 1 trade, but in favor of Team Hawk. Not bad, not bad. I mean, Team Hawk, at least they are making some good decisions, right? If we are going to sacrifice HP from our Tier 2, we need to be able to kind of find the right opportunities to punish our opponents. And I think it, especially for Iris, getting the initial lockdown onto Panda to kind of set this entire fight and this entire sequence down on the bottom side. With the help of Noir, let's not forget. Wait, a boss? He should be okay, right? Yeah. Flicker forced out. And that's another crucial battle spell from Bounty. And Taken can take this Tier 1, finally! Free up the side lanes a little bit. Yeah, but I think they are going to lose mid tier 2 at this point. I mean, there's so little map pressure for the side of Team Hawk, right? There's not a lot of safe places to actually sit back and relax. The rest of the bounty, they can just keep playing this count mouse game! Found Noir again. Where's the damage? Noir, able to get the shun poke kick onto Panda, but the backup from Dominus is there. Panda gets out. Noir ends up dropping. Yellow is traded back, but it seems like Bounty wants more. Yuna in the forefront of it. Team Hawk doesn't allow them to chase. They're trading back and forth constantly. The Team Hawk fans giving the Team Hawk Supers even, giving yeah. extra support here on our side. Hopefully, we always get the loud ones. We, we get the loudest we of the loud, right? The, loudest, the best ones. <laughs> the best ones. The most dedicated of fans. Mm. And you got to give it to them. Their chants are always the best. Oh, yes. I think Team Hawk chants, they've, they've got the most iconic ones. So far, so good in the overall game here. That Bounty Esports, 6-9 to nine so far, but they're getting a lot of side pressure on the opposite side of the map. I think Bounty have recognized that it's starting to become pretty difficult to take them on 5v5. Might as well split up the pressure. And that's what I was expecting from Bounty from the get-go, right? The moment her boss gets out of the side lane, this is what you're going to do. Constantly put oh. pressure there to pull members from Team Hawk. Get some trades if you can't get the objective. But this means that they will be at a man disadvantage. So Bounty forcing that lore reset is a good start. Noir taking massive damage already. The Lord actually didn't fully reset. This could be a 50-50. Team Hawk has to let it go. Whoa. Back to square one. Yep. The Lord Dance is going to keep on moving like this, right? They see Havas leave that. Oh, bottom side yellow almost landing the I'm offended here. And Noir, now he's going to get pulled back, terrified. This could be it, but the Shun Po Shield keeps him alive. And now they drop the internal Guardian. Team Hawk can't really fight this bounty. Finding some signs of life. This Lord Dance continues. Panda just constantly dealing the damage. It really shouldn't be this even. I was expecting Bounty to have taken this Lord already and look for inhibitors or much early on into the game, but it looks like Team Hawk, they're playing it very well, right? The way that they're threatening their position, the way that they are pulling this Lord towards them, and more importantly, having Lexia, uh, having Lexia just waiting for the right opportunity to steal a perfect alt. This could be the setup that they want to punish Bounty with and flip that goal from 3,000 into a for at least, at least the 2,000 lead for Team Hawk. And you can't forget about Janus as well. This man has an immortality. Takes a bit too much effort to break through four health bars. And he's going to constantly be a thorn in Bounty's side. And that means this, this Lord Dance is going to be postponed for now. Both teams going back to manage the waves a little bit. Team Hawk is going to be the one to kind of have a bit of that advantage on this Lord area. Bounty, I'm setting shop down bot. With only Yuna handling the Lord. Well, let's see how long 
they can actually hold this out because the longer that this goes, the quicker Janice is eventually going to get even levels with Yuna, and then it's just not going to be worth it, right? Yuna needs to hit level 15 to maintain the lead of EXP and having a bigger retribution to threaten the Lord, but now Team Hawk, decisions need to be made. Bottom lane. Even the AI winning prediction is saying there's a small dip in Bounty's chances of winning, but it's still 73. And this is what you want to see from her boss. Noir with the punish gets the kick. The kick came late and her boss is going to get out of this. All right, flicker for flicker. One, way of the Dragon being thrown away. And now no Faraga armor. This could be it right here, right now. Could be a free forward for Panda. He's just running Team Hawk members down. Bounty finally finding the chink in the armor of Team Hawk and get the first Lord. Right, all right, first Lord in their pockets. 3.7k, sorry, 3.6k gold lead for the side of Bounty Esports. Team Hawk have to play hyper defensively at this point. They're just waiting for Noir to find these big engages. I think even for Iris, right, the fact that you are playing Fredrin, that flicker alt is going to be your most powerful tool. And if he doesn't find the right targets within it, you're basically wasting in the entire kit. Flicker alt, even the flicker energy eruption, right, the taunt. Yeah. I would argue the taunt is way more important considering how you need to catch targets like the Paquito and the Carry, but you need the help of Noir. You need the help of maybe Lexia with the stolen I'm Offended. Uh, I think it's a little too difficult, right? There's so many things to help heal them off. The fact that Yan Lor can easily just lock him up, lock him in place. The fact that Dominus's fear is able to put, uh, hold him off so the rest of the team can heal backwards. It's either Panda walks up way too far forward or Bounty Esports makes a crazy mistake. Well, Team Hawk just cleared off the top and mid wave. That means they only have the Lord to deal with. Mid wave is going to be crashing in, but it shouldn't be an issue for Team Hawk to at least clear it out. Panda chipping away at the health bar of the inhibitor as much as he can, as the bottom inhibitor will actually fall to the Lord. Maybe Bounty will get more out from this than we expected. Uh, I think they will. They might even get a second inhibitor here. Onto Yen Lord, able to get away in time. Here comes Noir with the kick, or at least with the knockout. No kick. Is ex was expanded in that exchange. Yup, and now it's coming to a point where Bounty Esports, they're eventually going to start falling off here, right? Mm. They're 4,000 ahead. Yes, this is a crazy good goalie, but eventually it starts evening out towards the later stages of the game. Iris is starting to pick up items. Saken is finally scaled up to actually do some relevant damage here. Havas, I mean, even if he builds full damage, right, it sounds like a very good idea, but Winds of Nature is just such a simple counter. Mm -hmm. Well... Noir, uh, oh, what a, what good timing. Ooh. That mortal coil. Yeah, given the emote. Well, well played, Yuna. Very Just well, well played. played. 55 more seconds until the next upcoming Lord is going to happen. In terms of overall macro, it feels like Team Hawk, they're sticking as five. There's no point pushing out, of the, uh, pushing out into dangerous territory. There's no point putting them into Dead Man's Land. And Bounty, they're just going to start taking resources off the map for free. They've essentially opened up this map to be Voss's playground. Now he can do whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. Bottom wave is going, always going to be constantly in Bounty's favor, and Voss has taught wave that he can push as well. And with the Lord spawning on the bottom side, Voss has a very simple task: just keep letting that top wave shove in. See, he needs to kind of set this up, right? Yeah. 16 seconds. He could actually get a slow push going if he really wants to. Doesn't find the pick that. Wait, no. Ah. Oh. Wow. Yeah, Lord. Now with no flicker. Good choice. Good choice to preemptively flick. Flicker because they know it's, it's 60 more seconds until Noir gets his flicker back up, but it's not worth dying just because he has the way of the dragon and you messed up the initial alt. And now Noir feels a bit better, right? Your flicker is going to come up hopefully in time with Janus just constantly being in front with the fire spitter. Uh, that, that actually is good enough to buy time. Let's see if Bounty Esports will they brute force this down. Uh, I think they. No, they're going to reset this. The fact that Havas isn't moving in for this fight yep. means that they're just going to hold them hostage for as long as possible until we get a side wave advantage to turn this into a 5v4. Five, five Ooh! Another pull from Yanlor. Is there enough Ooh. damage to get rid of Iris? It seems like it. they will be. That's the immortality down. Iris will have to flicker out. That means that the counter engage mechanism is no longer there. Mm, they're getting a small you reset are? here. Oh, the terrify. Yeah, that's the thing. There's just so much peel for the side of Bounty Esports. It's hard to get in on them. and. I mean, for the most part, Havas having the time of his life. He's just proxying wave after wave after wave. It's going to be such a hard contest. Bounty can start moving up again. Nairis wants to join his team. They get the kick this time. On to Yuna. Can they get rid of the Martis at least? Here comes the last Sandy. Yuna's immortality is going to be gone. As Panda taking three shots. Oh! Please tell he's the one that finishes him off. Blasted. But Absolutely 
blasted. He wasn't expecting him to do that much damage. Sakian landed two soccer balls in his face and he thought, okay, I'm gonna find Winston of Nature, but Lexia is not gonna let that slide. Oh, nicely done from the side of Team Hawk. And now the gold lead is starting to not matter at this point in time. With this Lord in the pockets of Team Hawk, it's all coming together, boys and girls. This is the meta, man. Skills about to tip. Not to Team, team Hawk's favor just yet, but Lee's is now and a balance equally between both teams. Oh, for how long though? For how long can they actually keep this up? Bounty have now starting to fall off the face of the earth at this point in time. I mean, look at their builds, right? Really greedy from the side of Yuna. He thought he could try and end this as quick as possible. Yep. Brute Force Breastplate on top of everything else? All right, all right, buddy. I see what you're trying to do. I mean, you look at Saka and this man sold his shoes. He's like, I don't need no boots. DHS, Wind Talker. A classic, a classic treat of his for sure. Yep. Synchronizing top as well as middle wave. They have a lot of catching up to do. They gotta give this away. They might not even be able to hold this mid tier two. Janus, he has reached that point of being an export that he can do whatever he wants. You can't take me down fast enough. I have immortality. I'm always going to be a threat to you. Oh. They're trying to slow down this Lord as much as they can. Retribution's also being used, but I don't think this is a dive, right? Oh, they're gonna try, though. That's gonna be a two-man knockoff on the side of Bounty, unfortunately. Yuna didn't even get to see the day of light, and once more, Panna goes down. Yeah, Lord to follow, and Team Hawk, they flip the script, they swing the pendulum, and he crashes into the base of Bounty Esports for Game 1. Yep, great opportunity here. Duar playing a huge role in that game, finding some pretty crazy kicks overall to stall this out, right? Trading resource for resource, and most importantly, trading resources against the main engage tool of Bounty. Something to keep in mind for their upcoming game. Everything coming together at the very, from the mid-game onwards, right? Team Hawk, from the very first time, they decided that to protect President stock and they put bodies, use themselves as species. Leisha, with amazing saves, Gets the trade for himself. Yes, Saken goes down, but they keep the game under control. And like you said, at one point, Team Hawk is going to have enough tools to deal with Bounty. And what do we see? Noir, the catalyst for this game on victory. 